and welcome to Homestead Corner. Today we are going to be putting up some rice and oats for long-term storage. Today I am packaging up some rice and oats for long-term storage, so I thought I'd bring you along with me because we are going to put them in buckets and this is a pretty simple process. So you're just gonna need a few things to do this. I use five gallon buckets. These are ones that we get from a local Chinese restaurant. They sell them pretty inexpensive and they have the rubber ring so they are all airtight and I really like those for food storage. That airtight lid is gonna help preserve your food. So you wanna make sure that you're not getting any air in there in the mylar bag the lid really doesn't matter it's just a matter of keeping critters out because mylar bags are very easy for mice and critters to get into they can chew right through them in seconds and you want to make sure your food is safe so once you put food in a mylar bag definitely buckets or totes or something to help keep your food safe um a flat iron I picked up at the thrift store. These babies are super cheap at the thrift store. Um, I just made sure I cleaned it with rubbing alcohol, the whole thing, and it works perfectly. And it was like $2. We're going to use some oxygen absorbers. And for five gallon buckets, I usually use the 2000 cc. That's just if you buy a kit of bags, a lot of times that's what comes with it. And you just want to make sure you've got enough to get the oxygen out. And just because you're using oxygen absorbers doesn't mean it's going to take all the air out of the bag. The bag itself, a lot of times when you buy freeze dried food, anything like that, you're going to notice the bag is not always not a solid brick. That oxygen absorber only takes out the oxygen, not the rest of the air. So your bag may not be sucked tight and that's okay. What I do when I put them together is just try to press as much air out as I can and then quickly seal up the corner. So I don't have to deal with that. But I've just got, this came with labels and I like the sets with the individual ones as well. And I've got some bags here we already started using and we're gonna use some more of those. And just rice and oats. I have previously frozen these for three days. The bigger bags, I like to make sure they have at least three days in the freezer to kill off any eggs or anything like that in there so they do not hatch in storage. Without oxygen, they shouldn't. I also put bay leaves in there as another precautionary thing. I buy the big, huge bags of bay leaves, so I have plenty of them and they're really super inexpensive that way. I'll put links to anything that I can find online. Like these oats were a pretty good deal. They are seven and a half pound bags and I think they were $10.99. I'll put some links and definitely anytime you're shopping on Amazon, put stuff in your cart and watch it for a few days. Really, it, wait until that price drops down until the best price because it is during the week, it fluctuates so much, it's insane. One day this might be $10.99, another day I have seen these for $40 and there's no way I'd pay that. And I also buy smaller containers of oats and got a couple jars over there of rice that I had last time I did buckets. I put them in jars, but I'd like to have my jars and I'll add these into buckets. So let's load up some buckets. So I just got my bag here, let's see, these are for five gallon buckets, and I'm just going to take my bottom and kind of fold it in so it fits, and then it will you know, open it right up. So I can pour my food right in there. And when I get five gallon buckets from anywhere, even brand new, it doesn't matter, I take a little bit, a couple tablespoons of bleach in some water and just wash them all out and make sure there's nothing in there 
no bacteria, no nothing. People touch these at the store, um, even the brand new ones. So um, in the factories, all that stuff. So I just give them a quick wash down and then let them dry for a few days. And then we get them ready to go. So I'm just gonna finish putting bags in my bucket. Okay, so I just try to get it as flat as I can on the bottom. We are going to shake this stuff down anyway. So we're just gonna start loading up our bag. So that is the first seven and a half pound bag. We should be able to get two in here. Oats are really light, so you don't, it seems like you don't get as many because per pound to rice, you can get a lot more pounds of rice into your buckets, but not as many on the oats because they are so lightweight. But we're just going to fill this up, and I like to leave a couple inches at the top just so I have room to work. Put this down again. Just helps you can get as much as you can. So we've got a little bit more space. I like to leave about that much. Just so I have room for the bag and whatever I am going to do. We're going to move on and just fill up all our buckets. Okay, so once I have all my buckets full, then I am just going to go through and add a couple of bay leaves to the top of each bucket. This just helps with bugs. Probably not necessary, but I have tons on hand. And when you buy them by the pound bag, you literally, they are so inexpensive that way, and you literally have enough for you, your neighbors, for the rest of your life. So um, there's tons in there. <laughs> If you cook with them all the time, and it is definitely, it's about the cost of two or three spice jars of them. So I found it to be definitely worth Okay, it. so before we add our oxygen absorbers, because we want to wait until the very last minute to do this, um, we are going to start sealing up our bags. I like to seal just enough space so I can stick my, I like to leave this open so I can stick my hand in there. I'm going to seal this section of the bag. I'm gonna do it to both bags, and I'm gonna leave this spot open, and then once I get these sealed up, then I can quickly put my oxygen absorbers inside and seal them up really quickly. So if you have individually wrapped oxygen absorbers like this, it's not a problem at all, but sometimes the last bunch that I got were in a big package of 10, so I sealed them extras in this jar and uh, so I want to move really quickly with these two I don't want them to go to waste so I'm going to use these up today and then the rest of the buckets will have these individual ones so it's a little bit easier you don't have to be so rushed you just want to make sure that they don't get spent if it takes you 15 minutes to close it up then your um, oxygen absorber could be ruined. So we're just going to kind of flatten this out. And I have shaken this down as much as I can. And I'm going to leave this space for my hand so I can start sealing this bag up on this end. And it's okay if you get a little wrinkle in it. It still works. You just want to go over it and make sure it's sealed good. And these straight irons work the easiest. I tried it with a regular house iron and you have to lay the bags down and they do get really hot. So be careful, don't burn yourself. And then, so we've got this one done. And I'm gonna move this over and just work on the next one. So you can see I've opened up both of these. It's not where I might get my hands in there. Just going to drop these in and then I'm going to close them up really quickly. 
and I like to move really fast when I have more than one in a container and we will get these right in there. So we've got our oxygen absorbers in. I just kind of push them off to the side. I'm going to take this, the part that I've already sealed, and fold it down, get as much air out as I can because that is going to help the oxygen absorber. It doesn't have so much in there to deal with. So I just seal that up, push that out, and seal this bad boy up. And it's hasn't sucked all the air out, but quite a bit of it. There's still a little in there, but leaving that space on the top of your bucket leaves room. Don't let that cool. And we'll do the same thing over here. Just fold that in, kind of push the air out. And then seal this end up. Now, these bags can be reused when you open them, which is awesome. You've got quite a bit of headspace here. Probably not going to get as much in them next time, but I definitely would cut them as close to the seal as possible so you can reuse them. All right, and then I'm push that in like that. We've got our oatmeal all done. I'm just going to put this lid on. So really, that is it for packaging up your food in buckets in Mylar for your dry goods. Oats and rice are exactly the same process. Beans, I would do the same way. There are a lot of foods that you can do this with your dry goods. And oats and rice are going to last a couple, probably two years on the shelf. Just in the packaging, they come in from the store. But once you seal them in Mylar, pull that oxygen out, you are going to have these good, ready to eat for about 30 years, which is wonderful. The only other thing I would recommend, if you're putting food in buckets, get yourselves one of these handy little lid openers. They're only about three bucks. I will put a link to this. This is probably one of my favorite preps for three bucks that I've ever bought. It is such a handy tool. Saves those fingertips trying to pull these lids off because the airtight ones are quite difficult to get off with your fingers. And this really makes it a heck of a lot easier. And that is it for today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.